Rebecca, I think you agree that science is expanding and philosophy is shrinking. And uh, as philosophy presents questions and as they're subjected to scientific thinking, various elements of what used to be philosophy are peeled off or, or squeezed off, become scientific and, and go on to the future. And I think everybody applauds this. The fundamental question is, when that process goes to its limit, when it goes to completion, will there be any residue? Will there be anything left for philosophy? Right. Um, so I want to address that question, but first I want to disagree a little bit with what you said I agree with. <laughs> um, and that is, I do think that fields of, um, as fields of science have broken off from from philosophy, I think that that's uh, you know it's undeniable. Right. That's just the history of of, of, of science. But um, it's not clear that the um, number of philosophical questions shrinks because the content of science itself provides new philosophical oh. mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, for example, uh, the view of time that is perhaps suggested by relativity theory. Mm -hmm. Einstein thought so, and he seemed to have understood right. relativity right. theory pretty well when he said that the distinction between the past, the present, and the future is an illusion, albeit, albeit a persistent <laughs> illusion. Um, a philosopher's, um, you know, a philosopher's going to go crazy trying to figure out whether that's true, whether that scientific theory really does um, entail or suggest or, you know, uh, that that view, and if that's true, how do we reconcile that with what seems one of the most salient features of our experience, which is the flow of time? You know, the past no longer exists. We occupy some present. We uh, have no idea of what the future is. That that is the the substance of human life. You know, that we regret or long for the past and worry or hope for the future. And here is some, somebody saying, look, science, uh, the scientific theory that we all use in science, it's a fantastic uh, predictive instrument, but it's telling us that the flow of time is, is not real. That pre presents philosophical issues. Quantum mechanics has presented a tremendous number let's, of Let's stick with time, because that's yeah. a fascinating yeah. uh, supporting of your point. So whereas physics as a, as a field split off from so-called natural philosophy, which existed for hundreds or thousands of years, and then physics now came in no more natural philosophy. But suddenly this physics has created a question about time. I mean, I've been at conferences where physicists talk about the philosophical issue of the flow of time. Exactly. And A and B, and, and, and uh, which is the reality, yes. and, and how does science support it, and, and, the, and the relationship between philosophers and physics, uh, and physicists become even stronger. Yes, exactly. And, and, yeah. Uh, in, in that case. Uh, yes. No, I, and I think, of, I think, you know, any, for almost, I, I shouldn't say, that for many, many fields of philosophy, maybe if I thought about it longer, I would say for all fields of philosophy, a philosopher has to um, uh, be knowledgeable in science. We actually need uh, that input from science. Science itself, what it's telling us, is, is giving us new material uh, for dealing with old problems of philosophy, but also suggesting new ones like like this. I mean, who would have thought that we would have to worry about reconciling this salient feature of our consciousness with the static, the frozen view of right, time, right, um, right. because that's 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 what right. uh, relativity theory is telling us. Um, you know, and I also, you know, I would say, you know, evolutionary psychology and giving us new explanations for uh, where our ethical intuitions come from. Mm -hmm. um, is this answering the questions, the age-old questions of ethics? Is it not? Is it? Is it? Is it? Do we have to take it into account, nevertheless, in answering the age-old questions of ethics? So, the content of science itself changes the color of the philosophical questions. It it uh, shifts them. It shifts our attention to them. The difference is that some scientists would say that uh, yes, we're exposing all these questions, but we're exposing it within the context of science, and we really don't need the philosophers engaged. So, if we if we uh, if we surface the problem of time, which philosophers dealt with, we took it over, they should stay away, now we'll solve it. We're, we're the physicists, we can solve the problem of time, or we can solve the problem of quantum mechanics in, in, in the observer, the issue of uh, the nature of information, which is very important in physics. But they today. cannot solve the problem of reconciling 
the they can't tell uh, once they try to tell you what are what what is reality like given the success the predictive success of this theory what is reality mm -hmm. like they disagree they all disagree um, you know many scientists I know disagree with Einstein's statement that time sure. is frozen sure. right sure. so that's going you know you can agree on the science and you disagree on the interpretations of the science and once you're doing that it's it's philosophy right. so with this problem for example of time you know what does the scientific theory actually entail? Um, does, does it, uh, what does it tell us about reality? But there is this, what, li what science needn't do and has really no business doing, has no interest in doing, is to try to reconcile the view that emerges out of science about reality with um, what the 20th century philosopher Wilfred Sellers had called um, the manifest image mm. of man, or I would say the manifest image of us in the world, mm. right? Uh, correct the sexist language. <laughs> and um, it is, he, he puts forth this view in, uh, in philosophy and the scientific image of man, um, that what philosophy tries to do is to reconcile the scientific image um, of us in the world, the scientific, so this is already presuming realism, which you'd have to argue for, but let's give us scientific realism. Uh, science is giving us a description of what it is like, you know, what the world is like, and what we are like, and what, why, you know, our relationship to the world. Um, but it's, it's, it's not reconciling it with these pre-scientific ideas that we have, and that we use in order to arrive at the scientific image. All of the assumptions and presumptions that we have to make in order to, to make sense uh, for the world to be coherent to us. Uh, even such things as uh, proportioning our belief to the evidence, trying to have internal coherence, um, uh, just the sense that it matters, the truth matters, right? All of so these, basic, yeah. so basic, that you can't, you don't get this out of science, you bring it to science, and that's how we're able to do science. Um, but then sometimes science seems to be at odds with our manifest image of what it's like for us to be in the world. Time is an example. How do I make sense out of my life if I don't, uh, Attribute to it that it's that that it's changing over time, that it flows, that the past is gone, that there's this future. I'm certain. I mean, my entire emotional life uh, presupposes the flow of time. How do I reconcile these two things? Science doesn't need to worry about it. It needs to worry about developing the scientific image hard enough, right? In it, 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 it belongs to philosophy uh, to try to reconcile that with. Uh, all of the views we need in order to be coherent.